moves. Amen. Hallelujah. God's spirit moves. God's spirit moves, and how can we sit still? If God's spirit moves, and how can we sit still? My, 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 my. We thank God for God's spirit. Won't you bow your heads in the word of prayer? God, we come this morning seeking a word from you. Lord God, we pray that your spirit will break forth in this place. We thank you, God, for what you're getting ready to do, even right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Scripture reading this morning for our sermon is coming from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2. And uh, we'll be reading verses 1 through 7 of the Gospel of St. Luke. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2. Verses 1 through 7, it is in fact the same um, scripture that we read and I in your hearing this morning. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. When you have it, say amen. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And I'll be reading from the King James Version this morning. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And it says there, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one unto, into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I want to preach this little while after prayers from the subject, this is taxing me. This is taxing me. Amen. This is taxing me. My dear friend, not that long ago, there was a presidential candidate by the name of Steve Forbes, who is, in fact, of the lineage of the multi-billion dollar family, which brings us the periodical known as Forbes magazine, that at the time of his candidacy introduced a flat tax, which is somewhat equivalent to tithing. And it doesn't matter how much money you make, everyone would be taxed the same percentage. Not too long after him, there was a gentleman by the name of George Herbert Bush. And many of you remember that his famous campaign slogan, Read my lips, no new taxes. Recent, recent history, there was in fact an African American gentleman who was a Republican who presented a tax plan, his name is Herman Cain. His tax plan was 999. 9% on individuals, 9% on businesses, and 9% on national retail sales taxes. It was in fact philosopher and political pundit James Dale Davidson, who once said that politicians want you worn out by taxes until you are helpless and dependent. When you subsidize poverty and failure, you are sure to get both. An unknown writer once said that there are two things that are certain, both death and taxes. Many of you in here this morning, if you are honest with me, you are feeling the weight and the crunch because tax season is on its way. But I want you to shift outside of that which is financial. 
And I want you to walk with me in the realm that is both emotional and spiritual. And when you understand that a tax is something that is taken out of what you worked for, there seems to be levied against all of us a tax that we cannot seem to emotionally or spiritually afford. My dear friends, when we come into our text, you'll understand that we are introduced to a gentleman by the name of Caesar Augustus. And watch what he says in verse number one. He says that it is his desire that the entire world be taxed. And I want to pause here and tell everyone who has a listening ear that it is, in fact, the enemy, the adversaries, mission, aim, goal, and purpose, that everybody on your road is taxed emotionally, that you are taxed psychologically, that you are taxed with worry, with stress, and with depression. And so even while you've been sitting in church, there has been something outside of church that has been taxing you. And so floating in your own mind, in worship, you've been trying to figure out, how do I get myself psychologically ready for work tomorrow? In worship, you've been trying to figure out, how can I juggle bills without being slipped under? In worship, you've been trying to figure out, how can I fight depression? over an issue that I don't have a key to. You've been trying to figure out how can I buy presents for everybody that's in my family. It's because the enemy wants you taxed. But do me a favor, if you have a neighbor, look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm not going to pay it, I'm not going to pay it, I'm not. And, and I pray to God, I pray to God that some of you in here will voluntarily be charged with tax evasion. That even though I have a right and a reason to be depressed, I'm not going to walk in my depression. Even though there's a weight and a burden that I have on my chest, I refuse to let it get me down. Even though the enemy has been messing with my mind and mangling with my emotions, I refuse to give over to what the enemy would have me to feel. And I know that there are some of you in here today under the sound of my voice, uh, you, don't, you have so many different areas pulling at you at one time. You don't even know how it is uh, that your head is on straight. You, you don't even know how your thoughts are still focused. You, you don't even know how your equilibrium is still in balance. How you're sitting in church and fighting back the tears. It's because you made up in your mind that I refuse to let the enemy tax me. How the folk on your Some of you in here, you are afraid to testify because if I testify, it might make me cry. If I begin to think about all of the stuff I'm fighting up against, you'll know I have a right to have an attitude. But I still speak to you when I don't feel like it because I'm not going to let the enemy get the best of my emotions. You've got to understand now that everybody in here is going through something. Can you sit there and judge me uh, when I got a problem with drugs uh, and you got a problem in your family? Uh, how can you judge me uh, if I smoke and you cuss? Uh, everybody in here got an issue they got to fight. Uh, everybody in here got a demon they got to wrestle. Everybody got a mountain they got to climb. Uh, but please don't judge me because my fight is different from yours. Uh, but what?
what it says. It says uh, that in order for him to pay the tax, uh, watch what he has to do. He, he has to uh, go back home. Oh my God, I came back here to tell somebody, before God can take you to the next level, he's going to force you to face your past. Uh, and the problem with many of us in here today is we don't want to go to the next level or go back to our past because we keep looking for the witness protection program. Uh, but there Scott says uh, the only way you can make it to your next level is if you go to the people you used to smoke with. If you can go to the folk you used to hang out with uh, and nothing begins to challenge, challenge in you emotionally. Oh my God, I don't want to get mad. I don't want to get upset. Uh, oh my God, I don't Issues, but I know that God will make a way in my life in spite of my past. And please don't sit up in church and act like you've always been in here. Oh my God, like you ain't never done nothing that you are not ashamed of. The devil is a liar. Everybody in here got something that we wish we could turn back the hands of time and do something a little bit differently. But God said, don't face it before I can fix it. You've got to learn how to face your past. But watch this. But not only in order to pay the tax does he have to go back to his past. But in order for him to pay this tax, uh, he has to go to, the, go to his past. But when he goes, he has to pay a tax not only for himself, but he has a pay to pay a tax for Mary who's with him. Oh my God. I want somebody in here to understand uh, that as children of Sometimes you are taxed extra because of the people you have close to you. Oh my God, you, oh yes, you, you got to understand that if you are around anointed people, that's when the attack on your life is going to intensify. Oh my God, you, if you're around somebody, oh my God, who's not going through nothing, you are not going to go through nothing either. But every time you look around, you ought to be connected to some people who are going through spiritual warfare. Oh my God, because how in the world are they going to handle you if they ain't been through nothing when you start going through stuff? You crying, they talk about what's wrong with you. Oh my God, you upset, they telling you, you better get over it. It's because they ain't never been hurt before, they ain't never had pain before, they ain't never had no issues before, but you better Worshippers, who can say, Pastor Moore, I know what it's like. Oh my God, to get your lights cut off. I know what it's like. Not to be able to pay the phone bill. I know what it's like. Having to raise a child without any child support. But I came out here to testify that God is a keeper. Is there anybody here who God has ever kept you through some heartache and pain? He's, he's kept you through your ups and your downs. And today, you got to that God will make a way somehow. And is there anybody who can say, if God brought me through, he can bring you through too. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you too. Is there anybody here who's ever been through something? I know you look good this morning. I know that you don't look like all the stuff you had to face, but I Oh, wait. 
gave birth. In the middle of the taxing, that's when the child came. It, it wasn't when the taxing was over. It wasn't when the problem was solved. It, it wasn't when the issue went away. Oh my God. But, but God brought her through. She delivered what was in her. Oh my God, oh yes, you, you got the wrong prognosis. 
you. You're worried. It's Christmas season. This is the end of the talk.